Hey, hey, welcome. It's September 8th, 2012. You're watching and listening to another great Nerd Stalker Tech Week update. That's number 38 by my count, because I'm the only one that counts. Isn't <laughs> uh, <laughs> that kind of cool? Anyway, uh, I'm Greg Vloria, aka Social Greg on Twitter, and you are. And I am Adolfo Ferranda at Nerd Stalker on Twitter. Thanks for watching, listening, everyone. Uh, yeah, good show today. Lots of stuff. We should just call this the Amazon episode, basically, right? <laughs> <laughs> yes, the Seattle episode. <laughs> um, but there was a, there was some Motorola news, or, or uh, you know, is it? You know what it seemed like, and uh, what I heard also yeah. on Twitter too was that, and I got the I got the feeling the same thing was that there's this impending right Apple uh, announcement, which which is coming out, which you people may or may not have heard of by the time of this viewing or listening, uh, and so it seems like everyone's rushing to get out the door with some sort of like new product or product news prior to that, right? To to circumvent. <laughs> Uh, any uh, uh, you know downer after uh, oh. Apple's announcement, but we'll see. So, what is this? Speaking of, what is this first story here? Motorola, something or other, Greg. <laughs> well, this week, Motorola Mobility unveiled the next Droid Razer smartphones. So, this is from Lauren Good from All Things D. So, the new uh, Razer smartphones are the Droid Razer HD, the Droid <laughs> Razer Max HD. <laughs> And the Droid Razor M, uh, all will be available from just Verizon Wireless for now. So the Droid Razor HD has a 4.7 inch touchscreen, larger than the screen on last year's Razor, uh, and a higher resolution display. Nice. Uh, Motorola also has, is claiming that the new Razor has better battery life than last year's phone. Um, so, uh, and more color saturation than uh, iPhone 4S, and we'll talk about that in a little bit. I want to ask you about that. Um, dual color processor comes with the Chrome browser pre installed, of course. Uh, you, you wouldn't be a Google company if you weren't, right? Um, then the Droid Razor Max, if you guys could remember all this, has similar specs but claims up to 21 hours of talk time and streams up to 10 hours of video over the 4G LTE. And these are all 4G LTE smartphones, by the way, folks. Um, Droid Razer M is a compact phone, 4.3 inch uh, high resolution display. You know, we're calling a 4.3 inch compact now. Can, can you imagine that? Um, and then, uh, despite its small size, it comes with a two, uh, 2,000 milliamp battery. And the original Dra Droid Razer from last year was around 1,700, so 12.5 talk hours out of the old one, and you're up to 21 uh, talk hours of that. So, all these devices shown are launching with the Android. 4.0 ice cream sandwich mm. and upgrades to jelly bean <laughs> coming up Boo. soon they say uh -huh. i know i know so you know the verge reported that you know this this uh you know, amoled uh, display has you know that uh, what they call the pentile rgbg uh, layout you know where mm -hmm. there's more green pixels than the 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 the, the, the blue yeah. and you know since green is uh the most sensitive color to our eyes. I think that's why it feels it's like it's jumping out at you and it's oversaturated. And, and some people really don't like that. I, I don't know. What have you heard out there? <laughs> so the feedback I'm getting on, on these phones, especially these, uh, I don't know, I think it's the HD and the other Razer, uh, the new mm. ones, is that, mm. uh, and this is from uh, people that are actually reviewing and have used and held the devices, is that they're virtually the same device. And they don't understand why Motorola didn't just consolidate it to make one phone as opposed to these two different models. I know you mentioned three, but um, the, I'm talking about the, I think it was the Razer HD and the Razer, there's another one or whatever. Max. Max. The Max. Yeah. yeah. And so why not just release one? Because they're effectively the same thing. Um, pretty much are, yeah. they're, the changes are, are negligible, at, you know, at, at best, apparently. Um, also, it's really weird that they're shipping with uh, ice cream sandwich and not jelly bean, especially since this is a, now a Google company. There's huge disappointment by a lot of um, Android fans out there that uh, that uh, that Google has is doing this. And, and supposedly, you know, the excuse has been that they vowed not to show favoritism, but this is almost like a penalty, it seems like, you know, to, <laughs> to Motorola. And having, you know, and I'm a Droid X, you know, uh, owner as well as an iPhone 4S owner. So uh, it's that's that's unfortunate news. You know, it's, that's uh, not good, I don't think. And, you know, all these comparisons, whenever I hear anything right now to compare these, new, these newly released phones to an iPhone 4S, um, is a little ridiculous in that we're probably going to see a new iPhone in a matter of days here. So, uh, you know, these these little these jabs at Apple, I, I think, are probably not in their best interest. 
No, and, and the joke's going to be on them at the end of the day. We'll see. Maybe not. Who knows? Yeah. But we'll see. Yeah. But... Well, I don't know. Yeah, we'll we'll see. We'll see. Let's get that ice cream sand. Let's get that ice cream sandwich off and put the jelly bean on, please. <laughs> Motorola. <laughs> anyway, yeah, what's this? Uh, well, there's more news, right? Yeah, um, yeah. No, Nokia Pureview. What's going on with the, their ads? Yeah, thanks to TC Sodic uh, of The Verge of this. Everyone's been talking about this one. Yeah, so apparently uh, what uh, the new Pureview uh, camera was allegedly, you know, this is Nokia, right? Uh, uh, was alleged to be amazing, right? The camera on the thing. But a bizarre Easter egg has revealed that the company's advertisements don't give an honest view of its technology. Um, the opening segment shows young man and woman cheerily riding bikes along a scenic river as he films her breezily laughing. <laughs> the ad shows side-by-side -side video, uh, obviously intended to represent the phone's capabilities. On the left, Nokia shows a non-stabilized version, which predictably looks terrible. And on the right, uh, the ad shows the perfectly smooth capture, purportedly enabled by Nokia's optical image stabilization technology. The only problem is that the video is faked. <laughs> they spoke with a Nokia, <laughs> The Verge spoke with a Nokia spokesperson who agrees that their pure view ad is misleading and they have since posted an apology. Uh, Greg, we spoke about this a little bit before the show. Um, it, it almost feels like Nokia is doing everything they can to lose this, this <laughs> lose this fight here, you know, with the, with not only other companies but just even within uh, with you know, to keep the company afloat at all, you know, right now. <laughs> yeah, uh, uh, God, I, I mean, God, it's like grabbing failure at the hands of uh, success or something <laughs> like that. I mean, God, I, I mean, I just don't get it with these guys. I, you know, but you know, they're they're like the kid in class. Remember we were talking about this? The kid in the class that like is terrible at at lying and cheating, <laughs> but decides to do so and gets caught. Right, 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 right. <laughs> Whoever wants to volunteer, step forward, and everyone steps backward. <laughs> is that Nokia? Yeah. So, Greg, oh, hey, God. why e-readers yes. evolved a lot today? Kindle. Pre Paperwhite and Kobo Glow. What is this? Gigom's reporting. Wow. Well, thanks to Gigom for this story this week. Uh, there are a couple of e-readers that got released this week. So, uh, you know, the e-readers, their portability, capacity, and convenience seem to be, and but they seem old-fashioned, as they say. Um, you know, they're a single-function device that, you know, because of their grayish tinge on their e-ink screens, they just kind of look outdated. So the the, the trend really was, and started by Barnes and Noble, is a front lit display that kind of makes it a little bit more, you know, brighter, a little bit a little bit better to the eye. Uh, so Kindle, uh, Kindle Fire, paper. Paper white and the uh, Kobo Glow, the e-readers took a big step forward with that another front lit displays. So uh, that was great announcements this week. Uh, so you know, are e-readers still relevant? Mm. Um, you know, they're cheap. The Kobo is 130 big ones, and the Kindle Paper White mm. is 139. You know, Barnes and Noble didn't help themselves by you know when I think they launched the first uh, front lit display, which really looked good, I thought, uh, but they mm -hmm. couldn't keep up with any kind of supply demand, so right, right. they were just uh, you know, they were sucking it for a while, and then finally, you know, as the as their supply problems uh, became uh, a non-issue, then their competition caught up with them. So, mm -hmm. um, you know, it, it's going to be interesting, I guess, for the people who are maybe less tech, it might be a little bit easier yeah. to use, possibly. Um, maybe for you know our our parents and grandparents possibly, yeah. um, long form readers, yeah, yeah. So, anyways, absolutely. Greg Volkswagen, what's going yes. on with them? Oh man, hey um, Volkswagen and tech news, know, what is this? Work, yeah, <laughs> work life balance just got better, my friends at Volkswagen. Cool. So, thanks to Emma Hutchings of PSFK and Reuters for this uh, uh, story. Uh, Volkswagen has agreed to deactivate emails for its German staff members uh, uh, the, on the company Blackberries that they own. Uh, under agreement reached this week uh, with labor representatives, staff, uh, staff members, uh, Volkswagen uh, at Volkswagen will receive emails via Blackberry from half an hour before they start work until half an hour after they finish and will be in a blackout mode the rest of the time. That's pretty cool. So what that means really in their flex time, it means uh, uh, 7.30 in the morning to 5.45 in the afternoon is their uh, basically uh, email time. And uh, it's going to be turned off after that. Wow. <laughs> it's kind of, I, I thought that was kind of cool. Wow. Uh, I had to talk about that this week because I think. Yeah, uh, that's kind of cool. Know. That's interesting. Uh, 
Yeah, I I don't know. What, what do you think? Would you feel? I, I feel I I've seen on the the net kind of half and half. People are you know the people who are kind of like are in love with their devices and got to be connected all the time are saying I don't know if I like that. And then yeah. the other people who are parents and yeah, you know, yeah. want to really a balance life. I think, life I think it's yeah. it's you know it's a couple things. One is it's one thing if it's a voluntary sort of work. Um, action, you know, so after hours, typically after five o'clock or on a weekend, and you're just, you yeah. see a work email and you can quickly answer it is one thing. It's an other if your job has an expectation from you that you will mm. be addressing mm. work after, you know, 5 mm. p.m. or after work hours, let's call them, and on a Sunday or a Saturday. Um, so mm. I, I think that's, you know, that's tricky. So I appreciate it at, in one point to a great extent. And the other, it's like, what if we want to get just a little thing done? You know? uh, I think that the, I think the idea is a good idea. I agree with you. I have concerns on the implementation. Yeah, yeah. Right. Man. Hey, let's talk about the next one. It's, it's Amazon week, as you said. <laughs> um, uh, Amazon uh, not fulfilling the world's uh, content needs. Yeah, man. <laughs> so um, this is a, a really probably one of my favorite stories of the week uh, that I've been reading here. Um, this is like a last minute edition from the next web. Uh, thanks to Matt Panzarino the other day. Yeah. So Amazon, uh, what his story is, is like Amazon's Kindle Fire won't be a threat to the iPad until it remembers the rest of the world is the title of the story. Um so what it is is Amazon's lack of global content offerings is getting to be a very serious issue, uh, mm. one that will prevent it from competing on a high level with Apple and tablets, as it very much wants to do, obviously, with all these announcements, recent announcements. Uh, unfortunately for customers outside of the United States, the picture isn't quite as good, as they represent a very, very big market uh, that Amazon must come to grips with serving especially because Apple has been working for more than a decade, 10 years, people, to serve those customers and are so well-placed to do so now. Uh, Apple, mm. to use an example, has sold around 55 million iPads total as of earlier this year. Um, the Apple versus Samsung case opened the books enough for us to see that 34 million of those were sold in the United States. Uh, hmm. That leaves some 21 million for the rest of the world. That's over 38% of Apple's iPad business overseas. Uh, the worldwide market cannot be ignored. You know, just those statistics, statistically right there, it's, you just you just can't do it, right? So the, the, hmm. the major content stockpiles that Amazon is hoping will entice purchasers uh, of the Kindle Fire HD are apps, movies, TV shows, music, and books. All of those stores are relatively well stocked and tended to with frequent additions in the United States. But how do they fare worldwide, he um, asks. Until recently, Amazon's App Store, with its own version of Google Play Store, was available only in the United States. Yes, Late last yes. month, it became available in the UK, Germany, France, and Italy, and Spain. That's fantastic for those countries, but it came 17 uh, months after the original launch of the App Store. <laughs> Jeez. And uh, that's oh, far too long in the world where Apple has yeah. been killing it with app sales, right? Worldwide yeah. for years. And Google has been making aggressive strides to make the Play Store available in hundreds of countries as well, right? Uh, movies were pushed big by Amazon, but its instant video service is only available in the United States, uh, period. Uh, as far as music goes, coverage of Amazon's cloud storage and MP3 options is incredibly spotty in the UK. Uh, with incredibly spotty, with the UK, France, and Germany enjoying some of the services, and many other countries wondering what happened over the next uh, what happened over mm. the four years since Amazon <clears throat> promised the rollout back in uh, 2008. Uh, but perhaps worst of all, uh, getting books on a Kindle outside of the United States is a frustrating affair fraught with unexpected taxes and fees and crazy variations in the catalog sizes of any given country. Uh, when you look at Apple's offerings in the international market, the decade head start amount of work uh, that is put into, you know, that's put into all of this becomes insanely evident. Uh, the number of regions covered by many, uh, if not all of Apple's apps, movies, you know, music, TV shows, iTunes Match, iTunes in the cloud, and iTunes University services is immense compared when compared to Amazon's offerings. Mm -hmm. The core stuff, Apple's music, movie app, and book offerings is available in all 62 countries listed on the Next website. They have a map you can see of the, of the earth, basically, mm -hmm. and it's covered in green, which represents Apple's offerings. Uh, 
basically the earth is almost covered, right? <laughs> what makes this coverage even more <laughs> ridiculous, Apple doesn't need the money it makes from iTunes in order to stay profitable. It's hardware margins take care of that, and then some. The content it delivers to customers is all about enjoying the product once they've purchased it. Um, yeah. It's it's almost exactly like Amazon's virtuous cycle, but in reverse, right? Whereas Amazon yes. sells yes. their services yes. and hardware is not, not, not a factor, right, in it. Um, where Amazon ships the conduit for pennies on the dollar in order to make the money of the content, Apple makes its profit up front and ships the content for bonus money. Uh, yes, Apple likely makes a tidy profit on iTunes, but it's nothing compared to its hardware business. The reason the map yes. uh, even exists, however, is that Apple has been negotiating these content deals for so long. Uh, these deals are incredibly difficult to negotiate and take immense amounts of time. Making a deal with the big five labels at top movie studios is just the beginning. Um, there are regional restrictions, layers of sales and distribution deals to strip away, individuals with a grip on fiefdoms, a content that won't let go with insane demands, blah, 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 lawyer, legal fees. Uh, there are hundreds of smaller music catalogs that need to be negotiated with, uh, with content lawyers and executives on a one-to-one -one basis. This is why Amazon can't really uh, be considered an iPad competitor on a yeah. worldwide scale. Uh, if it was right. selling for a hardware profit and managing to do so on a decent scale around the world, even though its content offerings are weak, you could probably make that kind of claim. Unfortunately, Amazon's benchmark for success of the Kindle Fireline has everything to do with making the content that causes it to be attractive, available worldwide, period. And Amazon is 10 years, people, 10 years, as we say, behind Apple in making this happen, at least. Crazy. And the pace at which it's adding contents for its users in the United States isn't being mirrored worldwide. So a really fascinating take on on a global you know in a global perspective because everyone's always uh, yeah. raving about Amazon and all of these offerings and ah, look at it, it's an Apple competitor but if we look at the big picture and by these numbers and what's really happening uh, they have a lot a lot of work to do well they're using the the, the tried tested old business model of you know shipping your hardware for nothing and then um you know making more on the consumables or on the on on, on the services right and um you know apple has just created such a value-added proposition with their hardware <laughs> i agree with you i think that's 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 been to their benefit actually they could actually figure out how to do the service side a little bit differently mm -hmm. um and it's just the way it is with Apple. I mean, I, you know, you're not going to be Apple overnight. Right. So, and um, you know, I stated but, in the article too. I mean, the you know Amazon's business model that the, what you just mentioned works great in the United States when you have those deals in place, and they know retail really well. Obviously, Amazon does. Mm -hmm. um, but on a global, it, it, in a global way, it doesn't really scale all that well. It takes a ton. Of, it's like a Groupon thing, right? It takes a lot of legwork yeah. and salespeople <laughs> and knocking on doors and shaking hands with individual people yeah. to do that. And they are just not there yet, you know. And we're talking about the Earth here, right? Not just the United <laughs> States. The Earth. I, I agree with that. I, I think that this, you, you know, the world is a lot also closer because of all this connectivity that we have, right? And so uh, to not have the ability to launch in countries very smoothly. I mean, Apple is very good operationally that way. I mean, you could see when their launches happen, product is available mm. and, and, and the right and the relevant product is available, mm. right? You know, with Amazon, it's like, like so 17 months later come on well that's the thing too right i mean the advantage goes to the early lead period right apple was just yeah. it just so happens apple's was first out the gate with with this type of thing yeah so, you know i i, I do like just, amazon still because i do like the growth uh potential obviously right yeah but, mm, yeah I like both companies yeah. actually so greg yeah. speed round dude <laughs> i love this thing i always like that sound but anyway greg hey, is up samsung launches yeah, Samsung launches an Android-powered digi digital camera. Can you imagine that? Uh, so uh, the big giant who's gotten pounded by Apple the last couple of weeks, you know, they, they made some announcements, and they announced a Samsung Galaxy camera. Um, and this is a small, compact digital camera that runs on Google's versatile Android technology. Um, you know, it, 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 it features wireless connectivity with a 4G LTE capability on selected regions. And uh, users can snap a picture with voice control, edit photos on the touchscreen, and instantly share those photos on social media networks. I, 
you know, I, I thought I've seen a couple of cameras come out with wireless connectivity. I thought, oh, that's kind of cool, but yeah. I'm not sure about that one. Yeah, man. So this what it was is a YouTube video of a T-shirt, which I'll, I'll post the video here. And uh, if not, I'll, I'll add the link in the show notes. And what it's using is augmented reality. And uh, some, I think mm-hmm. it's a couple guys in Stockholm uh, have, uh, what they've done is put aug- augmented reality uh, icon on their shirt and like on the chest level in this particular example, right? So when you use an augmented reality application to view it via your cell phone or whatever, uh, an alien slowly pops out of your chest from kind of like Giger, like Giger style, like from aliens. <laughs> And it comes forward and it's like growling and hissing and then moving and it looks awesome. It's really cool. Uh, in the video, nice. they also move nice. to the side and they do like a profile nice. view and you can actually see yes. the, it protruding out of the chest in almost a 3D type of way. It's really fun, really cool. I've never seen like a fun application of, of like this kind of a augmented reality thing. Usually it's some sort of like no, other advertising cool. type yeah. of thing or more like a kind of, I don't know, a serious type of thing. So this is a lot of fun. Uh, check it out. We'll, we'll include the link uh, in the video here. Nice, nice. Speed Thank map. you. Thank you. That was a great one. Okay, mine. Uh, IBM plans to bring supercomputer Watson to smartphones. <laughs> Can you believe it or not? Thank you to uh, Sarah Fryer of SF Gate, a local paper here. Um, IBM researchers spent four years developing Watson, the, the computer smart enough to beat the champions of the quiz show Jeopardy. Cool. Um, right. But now they're trying to figure out how to get those capabilities to us, the, the normal consumer. Mm. Uh, so the uh, the vice president of innovation, um, Bernie Meyerson, uh, envisions a voice-activated Watson that answers questions like, uh, like a supercharged version of Apple Siri, they say. So a farmer could be in the field and he asks his phone, uh, when should I plant my corn? <laughs> that was kind of a funny example, but okay. Uh, he, w- he would reply in seconds, and based on location data, historical trends, and other sensory data, um, tell him exactly when he should do it. Yeah, uh, cool. You know, he'd probably say, uh, it, would have, it was yesterday, Sam. Mm. You missed the boat. Yeah, man. <laughs> Farmer's <laughs> but, almanac. But I thought that was kind of cool. Yeah, it, it, they, they, were, they were also talking about adding senses, like um, voice uh, image recognition to this, because the, the supercomputer is just so, so freaking awesome. Yeah. That uh, you know they uh, you know a guy could say here here's where I am and here's what I see right. and uh, tell me what I should do. Right, right. <laughs> That's why they call those why. computers super, right? <laughs> yes, yes. Okay, my friend, let's go to yours. <laughs> yeah. So uh, thanks uh, to Charlie Sorrell of Cult of Mac. Uh, what this is is uh, it's called the HiCal. It's like a Bluetooth glove, actually. It was discovered by a friend at uh, Cult of Mac, Daniel Pecciolini, at the at IFA in Berlin. Um, it's a pair of gloves with some additional additions to the right glove. It has a battery, mm. microphone, speaker, and Bluetooth radio. And yes, the mic is in the pinky, and the speaker is in the thumb, making the glove okay, into so. an inspector, an inspector gadget style finger phone. So like that. There you go. Like it's an sorry, actual I'm working sorry, like phone. Okay, yeah, I got it. Yeah. Got so it. now imagine the situation. It. It's cold. Then, you're too cold to go anywhere near a Bluetooth headset, and your iPhone rings. You're wearing the gloves, so you can't even answer the thing. What do you do? You stick your thumb in your ear and start talking to your little finger. What else? Everyone wins. You get to keep your hands warm, and your phone stays safe in your pocket. Passerbys don't have to see weirdo who's chatting himself on those moronic Bluetooth headsets. And uh, everyone's happy and fun. Uh, it's not a mere gimmick either, apparently. The maker claims three hours of uh, talk time and 20 hours of standby time. And the glove is controlled by three buttons on the wrist. So presumably making calls and controlling nice. Siri are also possible. Price and availability are TBA <laughs> to be announced. Nerdy. <laughs> totally nerdy. I love it. Yeah, man. Totally nerdy. Gosh. God. I, I, I thought we might have seen that at the Maker Fair this year. So <laughs> that's Speed pretty round. cool. Yeah, I love it. Well, this is going to just be a uh, a plug for an interview we had this week, um, but I just want to talk about the service I'm from Toa Technologies. They're going to be at Dreamforce this week at um, Dreamforce 2012 at Moscone Center. Um, they, they provide a service that uh, actually allows 
those service people who say, I'm going to be there from 8 to 12 to be there within a half an hour, so you won't waste your time. So catch catch the interview. They talk a lot about the technology and the use behind that, and uh, it was just cool to interview them. So Toa Technologies, uh, Yuval Brinkman, it was my interview. So anyway, that's just a, that's a plug for one of our interviews. But shameless. It is in our speed. Quite run. shameless. Yes, very shameless. <laughs> very shameless, but... I I have no shame, as you know. Uh, <laughs> no, he does not, people. Greg does not. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. Anyway, let's go on. Uh, what are the tips of the week? Do you have a tip for us this yes, week? Yes, this is the Debbie Downer Tip of the Week by Adolfo. Uh, it is called Dead Set. So Dead Set is an iOS application. Dead Set lets you create your legal last will and testament by importing friends and family from your address book and entering assets that you want them to inherit when you pass away. Dead Set makes it easy and intuitive and even fun to handle the often unpleasant business of preparing for the great inevitable. As they say, Dead Set features, create your last will and testament, save lots of money, create your legal last will without you need to hire a, needing to hire an attorney, manage your assets, total net worth, import and manage family, rate your heirs wow. uh, proportionally, <laughs> easily create inheritance, high level security, beautiful designed iPhone app, which I have to admit, I saw pictures of this thing, I'll put some images on here. Yeah. Uh, the app actually really yeah. looks nice. I'm very impressed with the UI. And uh, so if you're interested wow. in this and you're morbid and goth like I am, uh, go to the iTunes store and buy this thing for $4.99. Oh, my God. Greg, tip what's your time. tip? Okay, my tip. Yes, uh, Tiny Tap. Uh, you ever heard of Tiny Tap? Well, it's a pretty cool app. It allows uh, parents to create an a uh, an app for their kids on uh, on their iPad. Awesome. I thought it was really cool that they. Yeah, I thought that was pretty neat. Um, so you know, check that one out. Um, that's a. I think. You know, we always want to create little little things, uh, learning things for our kids, and um, you know, this just brings technology into the play, and you know, turns turns mom and dad into that geek mom, geek dad that you always love Fun. and, and uh, appreciate that. So Fun. yeah, that'll be. Uh, I'll put the link on the on our uh, notes for that one. So anyway, hey, we, we have a couple of events this events week. Events happening, right? <laughs> what do we have? Back to back SF New Tech, the uh, September twelfth and thirteenth. Why don't you talk about the twelfth? Yeah, well, uh, the 12th will be at uh, 119 uh, Utah Street, the Mighty Nightclub, uh, as always, for SM New Tech. Uh, uh, doors open at 5.30, and uh, the pitches start at 7.30, and Adolfo and I will be there at 7 o'clock, probably doing some uh, pre-show interviews and uh, just pre and a uh, post-show uh, update and a recap. So uh, you have Mine, Devium, Alphan Industries, Social POV, ResD, I, you know, I, I – you know, it, it's 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 a it's a smorgasbord of uh, tech uh, pitches that you'll see on UStream. And That's then, right. Hey, talk about um, and then there's, the following there's some night. Startups from yeah, the following Buenos Aires. Yeah, coming. so it's Argentina night, uh, startup night. So check it out. Uh, this is great to see some South American tech companies finally coming into uh, the Bay Area to pitch. Uh, you know, it's a whole other uh, continent down there that we want to see talent and technology from. I know we did an interview some time mm. back about it with a uh, HTML5 uh, uh, media center uh, developer guy. Um, but uh, yeah, oh, really? this is good to see wow. some Argentinian come up and yeah so this is the best of buenos aires uh same thing sfnewtech.com to get information this will be september 13th or you could check it out live if you're not in the area at sfnewtech.com uh, forward slash live is that right greg yeah okay and on the main page as well as on awesome. Ustream. so uh yeah sf new tech tv yeah and uh you're going to failcon failcon again? yeah so we are a media partner with failcon so thank you to failcon check it out you guys october 22nd failcon entrepreneurs investors developers and designers to study their own and others failures and prepare for success this is really great for uh, startups and as they say entrepreneurs um if you're interested in that kind of thing you have your own business small business this is an amazing place to 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 learn lots of really great stuff the price is right it's a one-day conference so it's not going to eat up your you know entire week or a weekend or a budget uh and it's at the beautiful julia morgan ballroom here in downtown san francisco uh check it out october 22nd failcon for more information go to thefailcon.com so greg tell us about transbay well, Transbay, uh, we're the media supporters of them. Uh, we'll be doing a couple of interviews upcoming, but uh, Transbay is the South by Southwest of the, of the West Coast, with, but with a little more tech, um, believe it or not. They're going to put a lot of augmented reality. They're going to do a lot more kind of movie 
uh, you know, media type stuff uh, at this thing. But, uh, you know, there's the opening night that's going to be on the uh, night party, which is going to be on October 12th, Friday. Uh, please come to that. <laughs> so, people, if you want to contribute to Nerdstalker, please do so on Twitter. You can use the hashtag NRDSTK, and we'd be happy to cover their stories. Also, you could just go to iTunes and make it easy for yourself and subscribe to either the audio or video or both. Uh, you know, podcast uh, on iTunes at Nerdstalker. And give us a five star rating. That'd be wonderful. You can go to YouTube also and check us out. Do a search for Nerdstalker TV. And we are there. We are everywhere. Uh, catch the 24 7 channel on iBroadcast TV of Nerdstalker. And, uh, you know, the, all the other podcasting applications, Stitcher, I think we got. Whoa, we're on Player FM? Player.fm. Yeah, Player.fm yes, now. Yes, so thanks for yes. Player.fm for that one. Uh, so, anyways, if you want yes. to get a hold of me, I am at NerdStalker on Twitter. You can email me, Adolfo at NerdStalker.com. And you, Greg. Yeah. And uh, I'm Social Greg on Twitter. And you can uh, get me on at Social Greg at NerdStalker.com. So, anyway, cool. have a great week out there, Adolfo. Uh, great show. Thanks, guys. Um, appreciate it. And, all right. Be careful out there. All right.